Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about nocardia, lactobacillus, and propionibacterium acnes. Today, let's turn our attention to mycobacterium tuberculosis. In this video, we'll talk about the characteristics of this acid-fast bacillus, and in the next video, we'll talk about the disease known as tuberculosis. Now, let's get started. Hey, Medicosis, why did we call it mycobacterium? Bacterium, because it's a bacterium. Myco, because it has mycolic acid. Myco means fungus. Yes, indeed, because it has some branches, some filaments that look like the hyphae of a fungus. But to be honest, the filamentous branches of Mycobacterium tuberculosis are not as robust compared to those of Nocardia. In the good old days, which were not so good, Mycobacterium tuberculosis was known as the tubercle bacillus. Bacillus, because it's a rod. Tubercle, because it causes a tubercle, i.e. a granuloma. A condition of a tubercle is called tuberculosis. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Mycobacteria are anatomically gram-positive rods. Spore-forming? No. Aerobic? Yeah. Motile? No. Let's review what we have said before. Mycolic acid is present in Corynebacteria, Nocardia, Mycobacteria, and others. But there is a difference. In Corynebacteria, the mycolic acid is short chain. That's why Corynebacteria is not acid fast. But Nocardia has medium chain mycolic acid. That's why Nocardia is kind of sort of partially acid fast. But look at the mycobacteria, which is today's topic. Very long chain mycolic acid. That's why they are strongly and fully acid fast. What does fast mean? It means resistant, i.e. they resist the decolorization by acid solutions. Put differently, once the mycobacterium acquires its color in the lab, you cannot wash it away with acid. It's not gonna happen because they are acid fast, i.e. acid resistant. Look at the mycobacteria, long chain mycolic acid, i.e. 70 to 90 carbons. That's why they are strongly acid fast, i.e. they resist the decolorization with acid solutions. Versus Nocardia, Rudococcus, Gordonia, and Tsukamorella, they have medium chain mycolic acid, and that's why they are partially acid fast, which means they resist decolorization with weak acid solutions only. Strong ones will wash them away, will decolorize them, but not the weak one. They can resist the weak one, i.e. partially acid fast. Corrine bacteria, short chain mycolic acid, that's why not acid fast and cannot resist the acids. If your magnificent professor explained it to you like this, I will retire from YouTube and work in septic tanks. Is Mycobacterium tuberculosis the only Mycobacterium out there? No, 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 no. There are over a hundred of these. Let me give you the most common when it comes to human diseases. Mycobacterium tuberculosis causes the disease tuberculosis. Mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy. Mycobacterium marinum from the marine. C. Skin lesions. They're swimming or working with fish. That's why we call it aquarium granuloma. Mycobacterium avium complex, previously known as Mycobacterium avium intracellulare. Although if you dig deeper and read more, the story is way more complex than this. MAC cause disseminated infections in the immunocompromised persons. Next, Mycobacterium Kansas I, discovered in Kansas, and causes a disease similar to pulmonary tuberculosis. And so does Mycobacterium bovis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, aerobic, poor gram stain, anatomically gram positive. What do you mean by that? They have the thick peptidoglycan cell wall, just like the gram positives. But in the lab, when we tried the gram stain, it did not work. Why not? Because of the high lipid content. Strongly acid fast, as you know, which means they resist the decolorization with acid solutions. What do you mean by acid fast? I mean acid fast stains, example, zeal nielsen, carbophosin, oramine, rhodamine, and phyte. Why are they acid fast? Because of the mycolic acid. Long chain mycolic acid, mind you. 
They have high guanine and cytosine content in their DNA. And they have high lipid content in their cell wall. Thanks to this high lipid content, they are acid fast. In other words, they resist the acid decolorization. They also resist most detergents. They resist many antibiotics and they grow slowly. Is it just lipid out there? No. Remember, we have some proteins in the cell membrane. If you purify those proteins and inject them to my skin, bingo. This is the PPD skin test that you can use to diagnose tuberculosis. What kind of hypersensitivity reaction is this? Delayed type hypersensitivity, also known as type 4. That's why the results should be available after a delayed period of time. In other words, 48 to 72 hours. When the patient calls you over the phone, Hey doctor, uh, tell me about the results of my test. Well, the results are in your hand, they are in your arm. You have the result. You need to come to see me at the hospital and I will tell you the result because the result is literally in your arm, embedded, inoculated into your arm, the purified protein derivative test. Virulence factors. The serpentine cord factor. Please watch my video on nocardia to know what the flip the cord factor is and the high lipid content. When your lovely professor asks you, why are mycobacterium tuberculosis acid fast? Answer, mycolic acid and high lipid content. Why are they virulent and dangerous? Serpentine cord factor, among others. We inhibit the fusion of phagosome and lysosome together. Mycobacterium tuberculosis grows very slowly in culture. Like one to two days, like most bacteria? No, we're talking eight freaking weeks that you have to wait until the lab gives you a call. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is very picky fastidious. It does not grow on anything. It requires some fastidious cultures. Tuberculosis could be a lifelong infection. If you have weak immunity, you are at a greater risk of disseminated tuberculosis or miliary TB. Route of infection inhalation by far is the most common, but also you can develop tuberculosis by ingestion or skin inoculation. Diseases. The lung is the most commonly affected organ. Brain, abscess, meningitis, encephalitis, you name it. TB, skin infections. TB, nodules, ulcerations, granuloma, big time. Constrictive pericarditis, big time. In fact, TB is the most common cause of constrictive pericarditis in poor countries. In rich countries, the most common cause of constrictive pericarditis is a previous cardiothoracic surgery. And do not forget TB, vertebral osteomyelitis, also known as POTS disease. Did you know that humans are the only natural reservoir of tuberculosis? On my lovely YouTube channel, I have a video called Hypersensitivity Reactions, so let's review. Type 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, from the fastest to the slowest. Tuberculosis has the slowest type. Delay type hypersensitivity. What kind of cells do we need? Uh, neutrophils? Shut up. Monocytes? Shut up. Lymphocytes? Yeah, but which ones? B cells? No. T lymphocytes? Yes, indeed. Type 4 hypersensitivity because we're talking about a granuloma. After I inject the patient with the purified protein derivative, I should wait two to three days until the results are available because this is how long it takes for the granuloma, the skin induration, to form. Let's make a granuloma. Who's the hero? T lymphocytes. Those T lymphocytes will activate macrophages. How did this happen? Watch my video, please. But in brief, it's the interferon gamma that activates the macrophages. And here is what happens next. If the organism is weak, we will eat it, phagocytosis. But if the organism is high virulent, like tuberculosis, we cannot kill it. We cannot punch it in the mouth, but at least we can surround it in a prison called a granuloma. TB can be imprisoned for life, awaiting a chance to escape. What do you mean? Awaiting a drop, a decline in your immunity, so that it can escape the prison and cause disseminated tuberculosis. How to make a granuloma? We start with these macrophages, we'll just call them epithelioid histiocytes. 
Then we have the lovely CD4 T lymphocytes. We will fuse some of these epithelioid histocytes together to make multinucleated giant cell known as lung Hans cells. And since we're talking chronic inflammation, let's welcome some fibroblasts, some plasma cells, some lymphocytes, etc. That's your granuloma. If you cause some caseous necrosis in the middle, that's a caseating granuloma. Hey, medicosis, is tuberculosis the only cause of caseating granuloma? No, it's the most common cause. Others include the systemic mycoses. We have others as well. But if you're a student, if you can memorize these four, you are in a very good shape. And therefore, anything else is a non-caseating granuloma. Here is a quick review of type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Do not forget that tuberculin skin test is type 4, i.e., T lymphocytes. How do I activate the T lymphocytes? Interleukin 12. How do I activate the macrophages? Interferon gamma. Let's review the characteristics of mycobacterium tuberculosis from Picmonic. Mycobacteria. Here is the myc. Tuberculosis. TB. TV. The cell wall has mycolic acid. Here is the wall. Myc. Acid. Tuberculosis is acid fast. Here is a lemon running fast. What's the name of the stain? You can call it many names, including the carbophosin stain. Here is a car bomb fuse stained. What's the name of the agar? What's the name of the medium for culture? Lovenstein Jensen agar. The virulence factor is the serpentine cord factor. Diseases include primary tuberculosis and reactivation TB. Primary tuberculosis has the caseating granuloma, cheesy granny lama. Gons focus hilar lymph nodes, lymphangitis, lymphadenitis, collectively known as gon complex. So what's the gon complex? Three things, gon focus, TB lymphangitis, and TB lymphadenitis. Primary tuberculosis is usually in the middle lobe or lower lobe, but the reactivation goes to the apex due to the high VQ ratio at the apex. Some students mistakenly say that the reactivation tuberculosis happens at the apex of the lung because there is more ventilation at the apex. Big mistake! There is more ventilation at the base of the lung. What is higher at the apex is not the ventilation, but the ventilation to perfusion ratio. Big difference. If you want to learn about how we treat tuberculosis, isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazanamide, ethambutol, streptomycin when you run out of ideas, you can download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It will teach you about antibacterials, antiviral antifungals and antiparasitic medications. I also have a toxicology course, a surgery high yields course, and many others. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.